You've got a soul that's going to live on forever. The question is where? That's why we're out here tonight. We're concerned about your soul. Yes, we're concerned about you as an individual. We care and we love for you. We love you very much with the love of the Lord. You've got a soul that's going to live on. Where is it going? Why does cancer kill? Because the cells are no longer doing what they're intended to do. And that's exactly what sin is. It's man no longer doing what God has intended him to do, what God has designed him to do, to live a holy life. It's man out of control. And even though this disease of sin is plaguing the world, even though it's destroying lives, and it is tonight, even though it has destroyed marriages, so many people tonight are not concerned about this disease, this most devastating and destructive disease of sin. People forget that the very thing that brought down nations and the very thing that brought down civilizations was not political or economic failure. It was sin. It was moral decay. And when people are no longer concerned about sin, when people are no longer concerned about what sin is doing, that invites the judgment of God. And this disease of sin has symptoms. One of the symptoms of this disease of sin is called pride. Do you have that in your life? Pride's all about, I'm going to make the rules. I know what's best for me. I know what makes me happy. We've got a celebration in this city once a year. It's called pride. It's all about, I'm going to make the rules. It's my body, it's my life, it's my rules. And of course, pride leads to that inflated, that superficial view of yourself. And that's the very reason why we've got so many failed marriages. We've got so many people running away from their marriages, wanting to pack up, no longer feeling in love. It's because of pride. It's because men are not willing and women are not willing to humble themselves. But you see, there's one person that can give you that love to go back home and to go to your spouse. There's one person that can give you that respect that you ought to have for your parents. And that's Jesus Christ, who has within himself a fountain, a supply of love that is overflowing that can be distributed to you if you're willing to recognize your bankruptcy, your need. And there's only one thing that God is going to do with pride. He's going to put it down. If you've got pride in your heart and life, God will put it down. God can do nothing to meet a proud person where he's at. He's got to take the pride down. Another one of these symptoms of the disease of sin is greed. You've got so many people. We live in a very materialistic society now where people are literally living with what am I going to get next? What am I going to buy next? I used to live that life. It was all about what I had, what I could get. You know, Jesus said a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. Life, my friends, is not about buying. It's not about amassing things that will only end up in the city dump. That's not where satisfaction is. The Bible talks about King Solomon, a man that had it all. A thousand women, a harem of a thousand women. Could you imagine he sheltered, he provided for these women so that he could satisfy his own lust. And yes, in your sin you might be happy, but you'll never be satisfied. Sin cannot satisfy it leaves an awful discontentment, a thirst that cannot be quenched. You can drink the ocean dry and still be thirsty. That's exactly what a life of sin is all about. And we've got, what, about a billion and a half people living on less than a dollar a day? And we've got to add to the hoard of our resources. We've got to get more. We think wealth is driving a BMW. We think wealth is having a home in Forest Hill. You know what wealth is, folks? It's a roof over your head. 
Wealth is food on your table. That's wealth. Jesus gave a story of a rich man that was so consumed with himself, like so many people today, talking about all that he had, talking about the years of supply. And the Bible says that night God interrupted his world and said, you fool. You're thinking only on the horizontal. You're thinking only of your stuff and your physical. You're not mindful of your soul. You're not mindful of eternity. You're not mindful of your unrighteous state before me, a holy God. God interrupted. He said, you fool. This night, here he was talking about his possessions and his life, and he touched the very thing that didn't belong to him. The one thing that God has a claim on that he will touch, it's your soul. He said, my soul didn't belong to him. The Bible said this night, and I pray you would never have to hear that from God. I pray you would never have to hear God say, you fool this night. But that you would be prepared, you would take seriously the offering of the gospel message, the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that's making the truth of God real to you because God cares and loves for you as an individual in spite of your sin. He's drawing you, he's calling you. Another one of these symptoms of the disease of sin is lust. We've got people today confusing love and lust. Don't even know the difference between one and the other. No, there is a difference between love and lust, folks. Even science confirms what the Bible says. There's a vast difference between love and lust. See, lust is all about me. Lust has a very short shelf life. Lust cannot wait very long. Lust gets what it wants and then it moves on. A lot of you young ladies will have a nice good looking guy come up to you and say some nice words and you think it's love. Five years down the road you realize it wasn't love, it was lust. It can cost you your life. And this disease of sin is rampant. It's destructive. Is there a cure? Because the Bible says that without a cure, it will cost you your eternal soul. But the Bible declares there is one cure for this disease of sin. It's not of ourselves. The Bible says that salvation is not of ourselves. It's not of religion trying to go through all these hoops to earn God's acceptance for something you don't have. It's not in psychology. My friends, the cure of this disease of sin is only available in the blood of Jesus Christ that is disease-free, sin-free. You say, why Jesus? Well, if I died for you, it'd make no difference. I've sinned. If a prophet died for you, be it Muhammad or any other prophet, they can't redeem you. They've sinned. But Jesus Christ was the only one that overcame all the trials and temptations that faced him. That faced you. But that faced him and his humanity. And he overcame them. Lived a perfect life for 33 years. And God declared that only His Son was the acceptable offering. Only Christ could take away this disease of sin. Many of you tonight know the truth. You know the reality of this disease. And yet you're saying to God, give me more time. There's things I want to do. There's a business I want to start up. And you're like so many that are waiting for a more convenient time. But you know what? The devil is going to make sure you don't get that convenient time. Well, that's a good thing to be Jewish. But it's even better to know your Messiah. The Lamb of God that was provided for you and for me. I thank God for the Jewish people. They gave me my Bible and they gave me my Savior. 
a savior of the world.